Nine years old when he used to come in? The molestations took their toll. <laughs> and now he's good. And now I'm good. He used to be a respectable human being until we got our hands on him. No, he wasn't. Until a man came into my life and said, Are you tight? Because I'm a beast man. <laughs> Sorry about that. But uh, so, do you enjoy coming in here? Oh, I love it. I love the satisfaction of a nice cohesive voice. Why are you lying to me, yourself, and the internet? And especially Owen. Oh, it's a bit of a lie. I do like money. <laughs> it's all about the Skrilla. It's all about the $100 bills. But, um, w which you can't get through commission painting. No, you really can't. Good man at all. My rule has always been with the old commission painting time. Keep your palette nice and respectable to each other. Browns, reds and golds, blues, greys and silvers. Keep them together and you end up with a nice unified force that you don't need to be a good painter to make up for them. So, uh, and then you dip it. The yeah. old uh, K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, stupid. Exactly. Keep the greys with the blues, keep the golds with the browns, and you're on to a winner. And, yeah. and don't ever paint swords gold. That's gay. Just don't yeah, do it. Yeah. You do do it silver, or you want to do it some kind of neutral blended colour to another colour. Yeah, yeah. That, that's alright. But, but don't just paint a sword yeah, gold. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, it's not little Wayne turning up to the battlefield yeah. with his Mac 10 and his... Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, he's my elector count. He definitely wants a weapon that couldn't possibly cut through anything. So, um... What are you doing with yourself nowadays? Are you still painting or are you just doing all your armature for Team Ireland? I paint a bit. Um, I'm an ergonomics operative. Um, Didn't ask what, what your job was. What? Uh, I'm an operative for ergonomics. He makes chairs. I make chairs. Oh, okay. I'm really good at making chairs. Because I just, I just wanted to know what that was past that. Because that's Well, there is, there is a ergonomics, You know, where you sit and how high you are and how far your hands yeah. are away from the keyboard. Sure. Chair maker kind of thing. Yeah, I, yeah. I can wrap my head around that. I understand what that is. There's that a slight link. Me. There's a slight link to hobby in the fact that one of the pillars of ergonomics is good lighting. So we sell fantastic desk lamps, which have massively, massively aided me in being able to see how bad I am when I paint. <sighs> the first day I got my uh, my daylight lamp, I turned it on, and I looked at all the models I had painted that week, and. Pretty much threw them all away. It's, it's just like, uncomfortable, isn't it? Like, yeah, I was like, I thought I was a good painter until I yeah, bought a daylight yeah. lamp. It's like a Lilbless ride. It, it just makes you question why you're even trying. Yeah. <laughs> I can hook you up with some serious lighting, by the way. Not that I'm trying to use the old hobby crackers as a uh, to develop some form of fucking clientele, but if you need any, if you need any crackers, we've got them. Don't worry about it. Get on the forum. If you need your crackers lit up, I can light your crackers up. And we can hook you up with some discounts on some fantastic lighting mm. through the Hobbycrack forums. Come back from the ETC, your anus is slightly red. I can hook you up with a fine chair. We can light that up. Your anus will be aerated, it'll be lit up, it'll be at a perfect angle to avoid carpal anal tone syndrome, whatever the fuck Yeah, CIS. Yeah. yeah, yeah, CIS. Yeah, yeah. Carpal anal syndrome. Carpal anal syndrome, obviously. So, um... I've been a lot of tournaments recently, and I've been doing fairly well, like in our Irish scene. But I've started going abroad and realizing all the tactics that the foreigners use, and they're just infinitely better than us. Like they pull out some crazy tricks you never see in Ireland. Like they use lore attributes, um, things that are represented on their models. They paint around. Hey, 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 I'm so what do you use a lore attribute? March, no, March tests. No one has ever used a lore attribute. I even what saw. What do you use it today to cast a spell? What you needed the... that extra one. Oh, that's that. good. That's good. But one of the foreigners, one of the foreigners, he even used um the what's that thing called that no one uses that you bought and you have five points left? Oh, the dragon Oh, the most little hard is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The most ridiculous item. It's basically five points. You don't use this, and the guy costs five more points when he's killed. Like, what does devastating charge even do? It's ridiculous. Plus one strength or plus one attack. Plus one attack. You see, that sounds it's fantastic. Bad. That sounds really useful. Why do we it's, not use that? It's, it's actually. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm going to charge. That's what I do. Okay. Well, I've been putting that in my Chaos uh, Exalted Hero for about, I don't know, 18 months. I don't think I've ever used it. Plus one strength 7, weapon skill 7 attack would be pretty spicy. No, you get plus one attack. Yeah, he's strength 7 anyway. He's a great weapon. Do they remember fear no. tests on the mainland? Yeah, but you don't I get plus one do. strength. Fear tests? Do, do they remember them it's on like the mainland? It's like, have they Because I kind of... I forgot about them and no. they never used one for a couple of years. The things like that just slow down the game. It's just overcomplicating things. I, I actually I played against. I used uh, orcs and goblins there during the week and I played against high elves. And then I charged in. I was like, oh yeah, you have to take a fear test. Why? Like, oh, because goblins fear elves. 
Fuck off. Would you behave? What a ridiculous reality. Where's that written? Oh, in the annual. Fuck off. No way. Is it yeah? No, it's written there. I don't care where it is written. Fuck you and your fucking annual. What's your favourite absurd rule in Warhammer? Not as in like it's overpowered. We'll leave that to like the proper people over at here. And Hammer and the likes. Like, what's, what's your favourite rule just for a point of view? Just book book? Whatever. Just Maybe a rule. Just something that says something. It's, it's kind of like, you, you, you know deep down there's like 50 of them. But yeah. You've been asked to pick one off the top of your head. Well, the most ridiculous one that I've had for the last fucking two years is Chaos Dwarves. Oh, we miscast. Know where this is going. Miscast. What a load of silliness. Oh, what happens when you miscast? Oh, you, you do your miscast. You resolve your miscast. So you go, oh shit, oh, strength 10 hit on the wizard ground. Okay, he's wounded. Fuck. And then as soon as you take a miscast, you take a fucking toughness test. If you fed your toughness <coughs> test, you take another wound. So there's Mr. Level 2 dead. But it's okay, he's dead. But then again, he's plus one toughness and minus one initiative. Mean. So you've got a dead guy with toughness 5. He's, he's sword against like, some of those. Death snipes. Oh, he's amazing if he's alive. My favourite rule in Cast Dwarves is when you start reading at what Ash Storm does, and at the end of every sentence, your opponent goes, Oh, okay. And then you have another sentence of like random ridiculousness. Well, it's, there's that, and then there's the, the, the Neil Peckett question, which, which is the, the, the two page FAQ on the Kadai, which Neil Peckett ruined for everyone. Neil Peckett, if you're listening, I love you, but also, seriously, what are you doing? Oh,